Hello, I'm back. I'm Chris Newson and this is Bego Replay, the weekly show to bring you up to date with the latest news and reviews from Bego Games. Sorry about being gone for so long. There was Christmas, then I was sick, then time, then yeah. But getting straight into it, up first, as if you needed yet another bundle in your life, a new classic white PS3 Instant Games Collection bundle is set to release on January 27th for the price of $299.99. The bundle comes with a huge 500GB PS3 system and one year of PlayStation Plus, meaning that you'll get access to the PlayStation Store's Instant Games Collection and more games than you have the time to play, probably. Should you want to replace your current PS3 with this white Super Slim, the PlayStation Plus subscription contained within can be added to an existing subscription, giving you ample time to download these games and not spend anything on new releases. Your wallet will probably appreciate it. Next up, Nintendo is joining together its handheld and console development divisions to one big team in a new headquarters location. It is reported that this will be the first large-scale development structural change in 9 years, just as Nintendo has released its new home console. Specific information includes the move taking place on February 16th, with the new building being completed next year, right next to its current headquarters in Kyoto. Fun fact, mix around Kyoto, you get Tokyo. That's completely irrelevant, but still. Next up, Skyrim players on the PlayStation 3 will finally be able to expand their 100 plus hour game as the game's 3 DLC add-ons are set to release next month, as is the 1.8 title update. Finally! Final release dates haven't been detailed yet, but when they are, Dragonborn, Hearthfire and Dawnguard will all be dropped by 50% during their first launch week, presumably as an apology for taking so long. Or just because. I'm probably guessing it's an apology for taking so flippin' long. Next up, after Jerry Lambert, the actual actor that plays the Kevin Butler character for Sony, appeared in a Bridget Stone ad and played a Nintendo Wii system, Sony went on the offences and sued both Bridgestone and Lambert, claiming a breach of contract by the actor. Now, however, it seems that the two parties, well Lambert and Sony at least, have ended their fight, reports media post, Sony and Bridgestone are still going at it. Lambert, under the terms of the settlement, cannot appear in any kind of ad or promotion tied to any other video game or computer entertainment system or video game company for two years. After that time has passed, Lambert can go back to doing video game ads, but he has also agreed to contact Sony and provide enough information so that the company can determine whether or not his performances resemble the Kevin Butler persona. I can kind of see why it happened, but it's, it's stupid, isn't it? And finally, the next-gen systems from Microsoft and Sony still have a little ways to go before being officially announced, but thanks to their time spent at CES this year, Baird Equity Research has made a few predictions about the systems, specifically about their price, launch windows, and what will make up the guts of the hardware, as reported by Games Industry International. For the information, we always seem to have to wait on, like release dates and pricing. Baird Equity Research believes that both systems will be launched between $350 and $400, with the next PlayStation launching in October and the Xbox in November. It should be noted that Baird's Colin Sebastian warned of early production problems for the PlayStation console, but specific reasons why this would happen were not given. Meanwhile, high-end PC components will be utilised in both systems, a mix between physical and digital distribution models will be present and voice controls, motion controls and multimedia will be enhanced. Well, I'm pretty sure that the consoles will be announced in this year's E3, but I have a feeling that at least one of them isn't going to be released until next year. It's just, just a gut feeling. Now for this week's reviews. As I haven't been around for quite a long time, I'm going to go all the way back to December 20th. So first up, Aaron reviewed Undead Feet HD on PS3. He gave it an excellent score, 4.6, with his summary, Under Defeat HD is one of the best shoot-em-ups to be released in a long time. The gameplay is smooth, the game is challenging, and the soundtrack is great. I've never heard of it before, but it's got anime characters in it, and that, that just means it's good, automatically. Next, Nathan reviewed Rise of the Guardians on Xbox 360. He gave it a good score of 3.3, with his summary, While nothing memorable, Rise of the Guardians is a completely serviceable hack and slash game that is experienced best with three buddies on the couch. Now, I've yet to see the film, but I'm going to imagine that the film is better than the game, because... Films are usually better than the games. Next up, Nathan also reviewed Lego Lord of the Rings for Xbox 360. He 
He gave it a very good score of 4.3, with his summary being simultaneously the best LEGO game and best Lord of the Rings game ever. LEGO Lord of the Rings is an often hilarious, always fun adventure through the magical film trilogy. Well, we all know how the LEGO games are just taking films and making them into great games, so this is, this is the only exception for having films into games and they're good. Although, Lord of the Rings games are generally good anyway. Next is a review by me <laughs> of Dead Space 2 for PC. Now I actually did this review back in October, I believe it was, um, and back then we didn't have the rating system or anything like that. But if I had to give it a score, I would probably give it a score of say, 4.4, an excellent score, 4.4. And my summary would be, not only is the game full of blood and guts, it's challenging and has amazing sequences, as well as putting in those jump scares which just get you every time. And finally, Mitch reviewed PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale for PS3. He gave it an enjoyable score of 4.1, with a summary, you're in for many hours of fun and enjoyment with friends and family in this well-crafted and sculpted beat-em-up. You are, but I'm always going to say this, Battle Royale is a complete rip-off of the Smash Brothers franchise, but it actually is because some of the, I think, one or two of the developers from Smash Brothers actually made this game as well. So it's it's kind of like not a rip-off, but j just, just look at it and look at Smash Bros. Smash Bros came first, Smash Bros is amazing. This is kind of cool because it's got so many characters in, but at the same time, so did Smash Brothers. It had Snake and Sonic. That's Sonic Sega, but that's not the point. You know, whatever. It looks good anyway. On this week's podcast, some Far Cry, some food. It's all inside this Happy Meal on PlayStation Radio UK Show 35. Tick all the surroundings. And also this week, the Irish lads played Little Big Planet and a Street Fighter Bonanza and Renegade Ops Part 2. So what are your thoughts on the next PlayStation or Xbox? Can you simply not wait until their official announcement or do you not really give a crap? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and they might be featured in the next replay. I'm Chris Newton, remember to stay up to date, you can like us on Facebook or follow our Twitter. Links to all articles in this episode will be in the description below. Also, I released a video on my channel and on the Necessary Gaming channel called Gaming Style, which is a parody of Gangnam Style and it's done pretty well so far. If you haven't seen it, uh, you can either go on Flobby Welly or Necessary Gaming and check it out, I'll put a link in the description as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Replay.